Hi guys, so we are almost uh, halfway through the course. So today we will compute complete uh, module six, and okay, let's see let's see how it goes. So I'll start with what is called as the Bode plots. So last time we we plotted Nyquist, and that gave us lot of information. It gave us uh, if we start with an open loop system which is unstable, can the closed loop system be stable? It also gave us accurately or with some good measures or some good quantification of the relative stability and we defined two different terms called the gain margin in a way how much the system gain can be increased before it reaches the verge of instability and also the phase margin how much phase can be added to the system before it reaches the verge of instability. We also saw a, a, a open loop system which was unstable and then we had to actually decrease the gain to, to get back the system into a stable configuration. Okay, so, what we will do today is to look at little easier way of, of uh, doing this, right. So, uh, it is called the Bode plot um, and it is also called the logarithmic plot. So, I, I guess somewhere in circuits you might have encountered this. So, it, it consists of two graphs, again we start with a sinusoidal transfer function. So, I first plot the logarithm of the magnitude and so this, this magnitude it will be versus the, the frequency and also the phase angle against the frequency. Okay, so, some basic uh, nomenclature or some basic notations will define. So, the standard way to represent this is in terms of log to the base 10 and multiplied by 20. Not really important of why this is 20 and why not a, a logarithm to the base n, okay, we will not worry about that, right. So, the advantage when I do this and will be which will be fairly obvious uh, in the next few minutes is that uh, multiplications of magnitudes can simply be converted to addition. So, we will see how, how these things actually translate to just uh, or, or plotting the frequency response in the in the logarithmic scale just translates to just pl plotting straight lines like y equal to m x plus c. And if I have two lines, I know how the addition of those two looks like, right. So, there is this there's kind of lots of lot of simplification. Whereas, if when I was doing a Nyquist plot, I had to be careful of lot of things, right. It was not really clear what happens at, at omega equal to 0 sometimes. So, there are poles on the imaginary axis and then you know there is a bunch of things, right. There could be multiple intersections on 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 the on the real line how do i detect those all those were, were fairly tricky and then it re required lots of computation by hand which could sometimes go wrong right? so we'll see uh, an easier method of uh, doing that okay so what is the advantages of this again that low frequency characteristics i can really see very well right and in most practical systems low frequency characteristics are very important in terms of disturbances right disturbances always occur at low frequencies or their characteristic is always a uh, low frequency characteristic. Uh, experimental transfer, experimental determination of a transfer function is simple. So, if I just plot how the system gain and the phase changes and I uh, in a way that I just give the system lots of signals of varying frequencies, of course, sinusoidal signals and I just I see what the output is. So, uh, earlier I said that I will do this experimental determination of a transfer function as a part of this lecture, but I will do a slight, slight detour, right. So, I will do this when in the module where we discuss non-minimum phase systems and it will be little more you know appropriate over there because so far we have not really talked of the classification of minimum and non-minimum phase. I will not even make the distinction of that because what we do from now on we know we will try to avoid that and keep that separately for an elaborate discussion a little later, right. Uh, so, what we will also see in, uh, interesting, uh, interestingly is that it is very easy to get the static error constants through the Bode plots, right, which we which was not very obvious in the Nyquist diagrams, right. And what we will see that these are just fairly easy to plot than uh, Nyquist uh, diagrams, okay. So, I will leave the screen for a while and I will just go to the go to the blackboard to do some initial initial uh, things and then I will come back to the screen again. Okay, uh, so there is a reason I am using the board because I think I can draw a little more freely. I just would not directly want to show you the MATLAB plots because that may not be very obvious of what I am doing, right. Okay, so what do, what would we do in Bode plots? 
Okay, so we are given a transfer function in the sinusoidal form g of uh, j omega and the standard procedure is to plot twenty log of the magnitude of j omega versus the frequency right? and the frequency will be in a, in a, in a log scale and we'll see what is also the importance of doing this on a on log scale okay so this magnitude is usually in this term referred to as decibels of course o, omega is in is in the standard uh, things okay now if i look at a transfer function okay so of a sinusoidal transfer function g of j omega okay first thing there will be again k right then there could be integral or derivative factors integral factor would mean a pole at the origin given by j omega power minus 1 and a derivative factor would be a 0 at the origin would which would mean plus omega okay if i could write it respectively it will be minus plus okay minus for the integral this way and if there are multiple poles it will just be j omega minus plus n okay then there are first order factors again both for the pole and the 0 and they would look like this 1 plus j omega t and remember I want to write the transfer function always in the time constant form that will be minus 1 for a pole and plus 1 for a 0 okay and then lastly I will have a quadratic factors and this quadratic factor represent represents uh, complex poles okay how would they look like this like 1 minus twice zeta s is j omega over omega n plus okay this also be a plus j omega over omega n square okay this will also be minus or plus 1 depending on if the the poles are complex uh, depending on if we are dealing with poles or if we are dealing with zeros and okay earlier we had for ease of notation defined omega over omega n as u and we sometimes use this notation for u or for omega equal to omega n okay let us start with the basic of all these things let us say my transfer function just has the gain term k. Okay, so so what will we usually do? Right? We will say I take 20 log of the magnitude okay so 20 log of uh, the magnitude which is simply k this will represent the magnitude curve okay so if i would just plot it for increasing frequencies so i would just see that it is a horizontal line for all frequencies right so this horizontal line of magnitude k for all frequencies right 
and the phase contribution phi will always be equal to 0, so the imaginary part is 0. Okay. Another thing to, to just look at, so if I have k, so how will the plot of ten times k look like? The phase will still be zero. Okay, so let me just go twenty log ten times k. So this is twenty log of ten plus 20 log of k, log of 10 is 1, right. So, this would be just 20 plus 20 log k, right. So, I will have a line somewhere here. So, this is all, all in decibels, right. Similarly, I can have 20, 40, so it will just be again, we are just adding constants, right. So, the, the plot becomes quite straightforward. And lastly, well, this is uh, 20 log k is minus 20 log of 1 minus k, 1 over k. Okay. So, this is uh, the basic one, right. How do we plot the gain k? It is just a straight line, horizontal line versus when plotted versus the frequency, constant for all frequencies. Not surprising, there is no frequency term here, there is no j omega term in the sinusoidal transfer function and the phase angle is always 0. Okay, so let me take the integral factor one over j omega. This was good for us because it helped in in the steady state analysis, or it had adding an integrator always helps in reducing the steady state error as we saw. Okay, so how will the magnitude look like? So, I am just looking at 20 log 1 over j omega, right. So, this is, if I expand this, it will be 20 log of 1 minus 20 log of omega. This guy is 0. So, what is left is minus 20 log of omega. Okay. Okay. So in in this thing, so what we will do is uh, on the on the omega scale, how is the frequency defined? Right. So this is omega, and as you say, this is on a log scale, right? So it's essentially uh, log of omega. So if I just you know uh, plot it on the x1, x2, so this is. Uh, x2 minus x1, so it will be like the units which we say sometimes 1 centimeter, 1 meter, 1 millimeter and so on, right? so it is always drawn to a scale. So, here we will not do frequency from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, but we will do in something called decades, I will explain you what, is, what it is in decades. So, the frequencies are in decades and there is a good advantage of why we do in decades. Okay, so a decade is a band from omega 1, some frequency omega 1 till 10 times omega 1. Okay, okay, now what does A unit change in not omega, 
we are looking at log omega log omega mean again if you draw in the standard x y plane if you talk of distances and time so one unit change would mean one second one minute that is what we write here right time in seconds distance in meters and so on. So, what is a unit change in log omega mean okay a unit change in log omega. So, if it is just by time I will say well this is t 1 t 2 and then t 2 minus t 1 is 1 second right and if you hear if it is say some other thing distance right x 1 x 2 if I say this is the velocity in meters per second x 2 minus x 1 is say 1 meter per second right these are the units right which we uh, learn in high school how to draw the graphs ok. Now, what does a unit change in log of omega here mean ok. So, this is log of omega 2 minus log of omega 1 is 1 the unit change ok. Now, this is also written as log of omega 2 over omega 1 is 1 which means that omega 2 is 10 times omega 1 ok. So, which also means that here if I say well this is t 3, t 4 and so on the distance between t 2 and t 1 which is 1 second is also the same between t 4 and t 3 right all the all the graph is drawn to that scale. So, here the distance omega equal to 1 to omega equal to 10 is the same as from say omega equal to 4 to omega equal to 40 can do this right log of 10 over 1 right you will get a uh, you say log of 10 here is the log of 40 over 40 right. So, this is log of 10 over 1 is 1 log of 40 over 4 is also 1 right. So, the distance between 1 to 10 is the same as the distance between 4 to 40 40 to 400 all in multiples of 10 400 to 4000 also right ok. ok now we will come back to this one right. So, we will be interested in measuring the frequencies in decade. So, what is here is in decade. So, the frequencies usually will be on the log to the base 10 as multiples of 10 0.1, 1, 10, 10 power 1, 10 power 2 and so on right and the distance between omega 2 omega 1 this is unit distance, unit distance, unit distance all measured in the log scale this way right and this is what we need to be careful of this is the only important thing here. Now, once we do this everything now translates to just writing down equations of a straight line. Okay. So, just say this is my y axis magnitude of g of j omega. So, I am plotting magnitude of g of j omega in decibels versus the horizontal line the versus the horizontal axis that is log omega and this you can see is sorry is of the form y equal to minus m x right magnitude y x is log of omega this is a straight line right. So, if I were to just plot this from ok I will not plot at omega equal to 0 because the log value is not defined, but any value slightly uh, apart from 0 we could we could plot ok. So, at omega is 0 0.1 the magnitude is minus 20 log of 0.1 this will be 20. Okay. Similarly, at omega 
equal to 1. So, this is again all in decibels at omega equal to 1 the magnitude is minus 20 log of 1 is 0 omega equal to 1 or say, say omega equal to 10 the magnitude is minus 20 log of 10 this would be plus 20 sorry minus 20 and similarly you could do for omega equal to 100 and so on ok. So, when we compare with this guy we say well we are interested in the slope. So, gi give me the slope and I could plot y equal to mx right this is a minus m. So, a negative slope ok. So, here you say a unit change in y. So, what is m? Okay. This is like 11 standard coordinate geometry y 2 minus y 1 x 2 minus x 1 right unit change in y over unit change in x ok. So, here we will see right what is the unit change unit change here is from 0.1 to 1 decade right and then here I am measuring the y axis in decibels ok. So, let us try to plot this right say let me say this is my minus 40 decibel this is minus 20 and 0 ok let me draw it a slightly better minus 40 minus 20 uh, this is 0 this is plus 20 ok. Now, from point at omega equal to point 0.1 the magnitude is 20 ok. So, I am here and at omega equal to 1 the magnitude is 0 on this 0 t b line here ok. Now, at omega equal to 10 I am here right and so on. So, I just draw a line which looks like this ok. Now, what is the slope? Right. See how much the y axis changes from here till here when I measure from frequency of 0.1 till 1 it changes 20 in the negative direction again 1 till 10 it goes from 0 to minus 20 again negative 20 right. So, this has a slope of minus 20 minus 20 what what is in the horizontal axis from point 1 to 1 or 1 to 10 or 10 to 100 ok this will be you know, 10 power 2 10 power 3. So, this falls at a rate of minus 20 per decade minus 20 uh, decibels per decade ok. So, this this is how we, we will measure the slope here again it is very similar to what is happening here right oh, y 2 minus y 1 that is 20 decibels x 2 minus x 1 right that is a decade right and the advantage of doing this is that ok I will have your 10 power 3, 10 power 4 and so on right and frequencies are usually from very low frequencies of 1 hertz till you know 10 power 3, 10 power 4 and if I were to plot that on a on a graph sheet in the market I would need to plot a simple transfer function a graph sheet as big as a football stadium right and I would not want to do that right. What instead I do I can just do it in a, in a log scale right in the log scale ok my, my frequencies well from 0 0.1 till 10 power 4, 10 power 6 and I can really get very big frequencies in a small you know A4 size uh, this much of paper right whereas I cannot do, do it on a normal graph sheet that is another advantage why we do this in, in, the, in the log scale right ok. So, the magnitude of this looks like, like this it has a negative slope of minus 20 decibels per decade ok. What about the phase? phi is what? I am just looking at the magnitude of this sorry the angle of this minus j omega. So, the phase the angle or say the angle or phase of 1 over j omega that is phi is always minus 90 degrees. If I draw the phase here if I say this is my 0 degree line the phase will always be constant 
at minus 90 degrees. Okay. So, the integral factor will have a magnitude plot at minus 20 decibels per decade and a phase plot which is minus 90. Okay. Now, how will the derivative factor look like? Use a different color. So, the derivative factor factor this is say omega. Okay, then I am I just write down these steps again. So, 20 log, so I am not looking at 20 log 1 over j omega, but I am looking at 20 log j omega, which is simply 20 log of omega. Okay, it's the it's the magnitude, right? Okay, now how will the plot of this look like? Hmm. Okay, let's say at omega equal to 0.1, I am looking at minus 20 log. So it will not be minus anymore. There's a plus here. This one 0.1. So this would be now plus 20. Okay. Sorry, 20 log 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is minus 1. So, this will be minus 20. Okay. Similarly, at omega equal to 1, the magnitude of 20 log 1 is 0. Omega equal to 10, the magnitude of 20 log 10 is this becomes plus 20 and so on. Okay. Now, let us start plotting this at omega equal to 0 0.1, I am at minus 20 and at omega equal to 1, this one, this this line or this, this color, omega equal to 20, I am at 0, sorry, omega, omega equal to 1, I am at 0, omega equal to 10, I am at plus 20. Okay. So, this is the plot of, of j omega. And the white line is a plot of 1 over j omega, right? just, just the mirror image, which is not, not, not uh, surprising. And of course, what is the phase of sorry, phase of j omega, the phi is always plus 90 degrees. right? So, I will be all the time here. This is the phase of j omega at plus 90 and the white guy is the phase of uh, 1 over j omega at minus 90 all the time, right? Straight, straightforward, right? You just need to remember something like this and then that the slope, okay. So, this slope of the purple guy is positive 20 decibels per decade, right? Because I go from here till here I increase 20, again I increase 20 and so on. So, each decade my magnitude goes up by 20 decibels in a straight line. Why is it straight line? Because of this guy. Okay. Something slightly, okay. what if, I okay, will erase this, I would not make it any more messy. Okay. What if this is 2? Okay, so I am looking at 20 log of 1 over j omega square. Okay, now this is minus 20 log of again j omega square or minus 20 times 2 log of j omega or say just omega if I just look at the magnitude. Okay. So, this 2 just comes and sits here. right? Therefore, how will the straight line look like? It will still be a straight line. What is its slope? Minus 20 times 2, that is minus 40. right? So, it will be something like this, minus 40 
decibels per decade okay and what will be the phase phase well this is phase of 1 over j omega is minus 90 i have another of the same guy this will be minus 180 degrees all in degrees okay just say straight forward i will not really know now draw this scale and what is this and all that is a kind of now easy to compute okay what happens to this guy 20 log j omega square this is 20 times 2 log of omega right look at this number now this will be something like this 40 decibels per decade and the angle and an angle phi of 90 plus 90 is 180 degrees okay so now I can just say well generalize this to here it should be 2 right for this analysis I can generalize this to n here and n here right so what will change here is minus 20 times n right here also plus 20 times n so the slope would be minus 20 times n decibel per decade and here it would be plus 20 times n decibel per decade right so the angle would be minus of n times 90 degrees and the angle here would be plus n times 90 degrees okay straightforward okay a little exercise right i look so if i have a transfer function now of say say 10 over j omega how will this go like well i am just looking at the magnitude 20 log so this will be 20 log of 10 minus 20 log of j omega so it will just be shifted by this number right so i will not draw this right you just say like y equal to mx plus c kind of thing so the slope is still here this is y on the horizontal axis this is my c is the intercept minus uh, mx well, uh, plus c right very very straightforward okay one observation we could make here is that the plot or at least the magnitude plot of the zero is just a mirror image of the pole right here it was going at minus 20 and plus 20 right okay we'll see if that still continues or not okay we'll see now not these things but what was the third kind of thing third kind of thing was first order factors first order factors are like this j omega t plus 1 okay now how the magnitude look like 20 log 1 over j omega t plus 1 right? the magnitude of this thing so what is the magnitude well you can just get this 20 log I will get this upstairs that would just be square root of 1 plus omega square t square right all again in decibels okay now it is a little more interesting it is no longer like y equal to mx plus c kind of form it is a little more complicated but we will try to simplify this okay let us first draw this looks like this is my omega this is my magnitude of g of j omega 
in decibels and somewhere here would be the phase right angles. Okay. So, let us see what happens at low frequencies. Low frequencies would mean omega is very small. Okay. Omega is very small, this term can be ignored a bit and you can say that minus 20 log of this guy is approximately minus 20 log of 1 is 0. Okay. So, what can I say is that for low frequencies, okay, this is my 0 dB line and I will just be here, right? Okay, I'll at least uh, use a color chuck for this one here, okay. Until what point? Okay, let us see, okay, let us see when this changes at high frequencies. High frequencies, omega. significantly large as compared to T. So, minus 20 log of square root of 1 plus omega square T square is minus 20 log of omega T. Okay. So, this, this 1 goes away and then omega square T square the square root will just be omega T. Okay. So, how does this look like? This is minus 20 log omega minus 20 log of t. Okay. So, let us see at, at one particular interesting number here would be at, okay, no, okay, I not write this, I have done this here, at omega equal to 1 over t in this the magnitude right so like like 20 log okay so 20 log of this entire guy 20 log omega t with a sign here minus 20 log of omega t would be minus 20 log of 1 and that will be 0. Okay. So, let us see at some point of time or, or, or some frequency say somewhere here which is omega is 1 by t this guy goes to 0 okay. and after that well I am just moving downwards at this frequency minus 20 log omega and how does the plot of this look like when well, I know it looks like this right. This is again at a slope of minus 20 decibels per decade and this also well I can say where it just moves here these two guys meet here and this goes. So, uh, well I am just making some approximations here and I am just starting at very low frequencies and I say I am just at the 0 dB line. I keep on continuing, continuing and at higher frequency range I am just doing this going down at minus 20 decibels per decade and this is you can say that the plot can be approximated by two lines right. So, this is one asymptote, this is the second asymptote. And these two meet at this point. What is this point? Omega equal to 1 over t. And this omega equal to 1 over t is the corner frequency. Okay. Now, you can see that again to say that for frequencies.
for frequencies between 0 to omega to 1 over t, my plot is approximated by the 0 dB line. Again for omega 1 over t infinity, it is goes down at minus 20 decibels per decade. Okay. So, these are the two approximations we get. Okay. Now, what is the actual plot? The actual plot may have some errors. right? So, this may at this omega equal to 1 over t, it may not be a 0, but something somewhere close to 0. So, we will see about what that is. Okay. So, now how does the actual plot look like? come to the phase a little later. Let us see what, what let us finish settle this business for. So, the error is usually the actual minus the approximate. Okay. So, what is the actual? The actual is well I can write this the square root can go here this is minus 10 log 1 plus omega square t square this is the actual thing. The approximate was what? 10 log of omega. Okay. So, the minus and the minus become plus. Approximate also had the minus 10, right. Okay. So, what happens at omega equal to 1 over t? This becomes minus 10 log of 2. Okay, this will be this will be omega t. Then. Okay, so from here, right, the 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 higher frequency things. So minus ten log two. This will be zero. This would be minus three decibels. Okay, no predicate, right? So at omega equal to one over t, I am just having an error of minus three decibels. So I am somewhere here. Where this length is minus 3 dB. Okay. Now, similarly, I could ask myself what happens at other points. Okay. So, so, the same guy at omega equal to 1 over 2 t would look like well minus 10 log. 1 plus 1 over 4 plus 10 log mm, omega is 1 over 2 t 1 by 2. Okay. So, this you could compute to be minus 1 dB. Right. So, omega is 1 over 2 t if I just say this is 1 over t somewhere here let us say okay, or say somewhere here is 1 over 2 t. So, here the error is 1 dB. Similarly, I can compute for omega is 2 t, the error is again minus 1 dB right here. Okay, so, this is say omega is 2 t. So, the actual plot would look something like this. If I just use this uh, purple color. Right. At the low frequency, it will still start here, and at some point, it will start diverge, go a little bit, and then you see go down, and then meet this guy asymptotically. Right? Hmm. Here? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. This should be twenty because square root disappears. So there are the again. Just recall the approximate thing, right? That was 20 log with a minus sign omega square t square 1 over 2, that is 20 log omega t. Okay, sorry about that. This will again be 20. Right? Okay, thanks, thanks for pointing that out. Okay, just be, I am sorry about this. The approximate ones you will still have 20. This will go 10 because the square root just comes here. Okay, so this is the approximate plot and the exact plot would look something like this. 
okay and you see that the maximum error is just at the corner frequencies so if i were to just you know vaguely plot how the error changes with with frequency right so let's say this is 1 over t this is the zero error so this will be some plot like this right and this are okay in this case this is minus 3 db okay so what about the phase here So you can keep doing this for you know omega equal to 3t and so on and just compute the errors that is again a straightforward procedure. Okay, so we will we'll now uh, come back to the phase. The phase angle. Phase angle well this is uh, this computed as the inverse tan of omega t okay, first from here. So at phi and at omega equal to 0, we will have phi equal to 0, uh, omega is 1 over t, I have phi is minus 45, sorry it will be a minus here and as omega goes to infinity, uh, the phi, the phase goes to minus 90 degrees. So if I were to just plot it here. So let us say this is the 0 degree line, say somewhere here is minus 45, somewhere here is minus 90, right. So the plot would look something like this at omega equal to 0, I am asymptotically here, omega equal to 45, uh, sorry, omega equal to 1 over t, I am at 45. So the face would look something like this, okay. Again, for uh, exact values, you could compute substitute for omega and t in this chart. Okay, right. Okay, so these were first-order factors of the form one over j omega t plus one. One over j omega t plus one. I could do this exactly in the same same way for a zero or first-order factor j omega t plus one in the numerator. Okay, so nothing, nothing would change. Just that this minus 20 will now become plus 20. Everything will be the same. Just that in this case, uh, phi would be zero, phi would be 45, phi would be 90. For these three cases, right? So this is plus 90, 45. Then the plot would uh, okay, use uh, another chalk. This one. Something like this, and the magnitude plot would just be again the same, right? If I just draw the asymptotic magnitude plot using the same color, so I mean, assuming both have the same corner frequencies, it will just be like this, right? So it will have a plus. 20 decibel per decade and the exact plot would look something like this for computing the errors like this and then it is asymptotes here, okay. So it is a very straightforward computation all these pluses would go to my, uh, minuses would go to plus and so on and the way you compute for low frequencies it will still be exactly the same for higher frequencies the approximation would still be the same, right. For low frequencies I can just get rid of. Uh, so low, I can just get rid of this term for higher frequencies, I can just get rid of this term and it will just be like a mirror image, right. Similarly, even for this guy, right? it goes down, this guy, okay. I will pause here for a while and then we will we'll continue to look at these guys, quadratic factors. This is a little interesting, right, to plot the errors, okay. So we deal with this quadratic factors. So let us say they are of the form 1 over this is my g of j omega is 1 over 1 plus 2 zeta 
with a j plus j omega over omega n square right okay so again as you i'll just do it for the pole and the zero is just again a mirror image okay so how does the magnitude look like so i'm just looking at 20 log of this entire guy right 1 over 1 plus 2 zeta j omega this is so, so minus 20 the real part this is 1 over omega by omega n square whole square plus twice zeta omega over omega n square again as as usual we'll first look at how the asymptotic plots look like so here we'll see well what happens when omega over omega n which we defined as u earlier is very small right if omega n over omega n, so this is so this should be a log here so for lower frequencies so the magnitude 20 log g of j omega is minus 20 log will just remain 1 this will be 0 ok so well uh, nothing much, nothing much changes here so for low frequencies I am still at the 0 dB line here ok so what is the other approximation the other approximation comes when omega over omega n is much larger than 1 in that case my magnitude just becomes minus 20 log so all these guys will go away all these guys will go away so what just remains is just this guy omega over omega n whole square okay so we ignore this guy we ignore this guy so we will have omega over omega n whole square square and then the square root so this will this square root and this two will cancel so I will have something like this okay so this would be minus 40 log of omega over omega n or minus 40 log omega minus 40 log omega n correct okay so again at what point will these two asymptotes mean this this is again a straight line of slope now minus 40 decibels per decade and some intercept here right so this can be computed because the omega 1 is already given to you right and when uh, omega equal to uh, equal to omega n when these two frequencies match then this uh, okay sorry this is minus 40 this will be a plus here right because it just jumps uh, to the numerator right okay and then when omega equal to omega n the magnitude goes to 0 okay so I am here I say I will just be 0 0 0 until this point what is this point at this point okay I will use a color chalk again this guy is still here this is omega is omega n and after this point I go down at a slope of minus 40 decibels per decade right So again I can just compute the errors as it is. So what is the actual one? The actual magnitude is okay if I just take the square root here it is minus 10 log of mm, 1 minus okay let me again call this term as u as I said even used earlier 1 minus u square whole square plus 4 zeta square u square okay plus 10 times log of 1 this is for lower frequencies okay then 
well again for higher frequencies the error would again be the same right. So, minus 10 log 1 minus u square whole square plus 4 zeta square u square this is the actual value plus now I have this 40 this, this is higher frequency approximation right 40 log of u and this guy ok. Now, what we see here is that it is no longer just computed by substituting a value of omega, omega n is given to us right. So, this is this comes from this. so omega I by substituting I just cannot get a closed form expression. So, what we see here it is depending on of course, omega n and also for different it will be different for different values of zeta ok. We will not really spend time in computing this thing, but I will just show you how the plots uh, would look like. Just before that how, how would the angle look like? the phase angle phi is tan inverse of 2 zeta omega over omega n over 1 minus omega by omega n whole square ok. So, when omega is 0 phi is 0 when omega is omega n phi is 90 degrees and when omega tends to infinity the phi so this will be minus 90 and the phi would go to minus 180 degrees right ok. So, similar thing will happen when I have this guy in the numerator it will just be this one all other analysis will be the same right. Okay, so, we will we'll go back to the screen and see how these things would look like right. Okay, so, we saw that the error was depending on on zeta for a given omega n. And these are my asymptotes, right? So this uh, the zero dB line till here, and then the, this guy is somewhere here. So somewhere here. And you see that the error is maximum when zeta is very low. I'm just uh, plotting for 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. This will be 0.9. And then as this guy increases, well, you see that the the error kind of kind of decreases, right? Similarly with with the angle, right? So zeta equal to 0.1. I have this angle, and zeta equal to 0.9. My phase plot looks uh, something like this. I just plotted this directly from MATLAB, but should be straightforward to compute these guys given uh, uh, zeta and omega n, but just to avoid all that uh, computational process, uh, I am just showing you this one and I could not even draw this accurately on on the board. Okay. So, now uh, given all these things, uh, how would we in general plot a Bode diagram given any general transfer function? Okay. So, the first thing is we rewrite the sinusoidal transfer function in the time constant form, we identify the corner frequencies associated with each of the transfer function, corner frequencies were the one where the asymptotes met for example, here well this was the corner frequency omega equal to 1. Okay. Then we draw the asymptotic magnitude plot like these two straight lines, then what we do is we determine the errors for lower frequencies for higher frequencies. How, how do we determine the error? The actual minus the approximated value again for both lower frequencies and higher frequencies and we draw the phase plot well this is kind of straightforward you just look at the what is the formula for phi and then you add all these phases to get the overall phase plot ok. Uh, Let us try to do a few examples on how to how to plot the Bode ok, how to plot the Bode diagram. So, first thing is write down this transfer function as a sinusoidal transfer function or in terms of the uh, time constants. So, I just rewrite the, the final expression. So, that will look like 7.5 I have j omega over 3 plus 1 over j omega and then I have j omega 2 j omega by 2 plus 1 and then the quadratic term should look like this j 
say omega square by 2, j omega by 2 plus 1. Okay. So, how many terms here we have? We have the gain 7.5 and then we have this guy 4 at the origin, first order terms as j omega 2 j omega by 2 plus 1, then we have the other first order term in the form of a 0 plus 1 and then the quadratic term j omega square by 2 j omega by 2 plus 1. Okay. So, I will call this uh, 7.5 the constant as g, I will call this guy g 1, g 2, g 3 and g 4. Okay. So, well uh, let us identify what are the corner frequencies, there is no corner frequency associated with this guy, there is no corner frequency with this guy. Well, this guy has a corner frequency of uh, well, uh, 2, then 3 and this guy has square root of 2. Okay. So, let us try to plot this individually. right? So, the first guy the magnitude would be uh, 20 log 7.5, right? So it will be a straight line, right, of that appropriate magnitude, and then uh, okay, I cannot really draw to scale, but I just so and then uh, one over j omega would be something like this, right, with the slope of minus 20 decibel per decade. Okay, uh, what about G2? G2 is uh, is a first order term. It's a pole, so I will have in the in the axis. So it just go straight for a while and then go down. Okay. This is like again a minus 20 decibel per decade and the corner frequency here is 2. Okay. Then for the for this guy j omega over 3 plus 1. So, I go till 3 and I go up at plus 20 decibel per decade. This is omega equal to 3 and then the last term when I do not have space left. So, I will just draw it here. So, it will start at omega equal to at, at the 0 dB line, right. So, this is this is at 0 dB line for this guy, this is the 0 dB line for this guy and after a frequency of uh, square root of 2, it will go at minus 40 decibels per decade, okay. So, let us let us see, right. So, now what, how will the overall plot look like? Overall plot would be the combination of all these 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 lines. Okay. So, well this is okay like the just addition of two lines. So, okay. so I start with okay, this looks close to minus 20 decibels per decade until uh, I reach the first corner frequency. This is the, so, this line is just a combination of these two right and after I hit the first corner frequency my slope uh, decreases further. So, this will be minus 40 until I reach uh, 2 at 2 I have a pole, so I will go further down to minus 60 and after uh, at, so this is at uh, uh, root 2, this is 2 and at, uh, so this will be 20, uh, so minus 40, minus 20, this would be minus 60, this would be minus 60, minus 20 is minus 80 and then I hit a 0, right. So, that will add uh, minus 20, so I will have minus 80 plus 20 is minus 60 is the slope right so this is, it looks look uh, something like this and i can actually compute what are the errors by the formula for the errors which we used okay so just to to summarize uh, so this is how the first guy would look like the constant okay the the green line would be the 1 over j omega term right the red line would be the first order factor which corresponds to the pole the the greenish line i don't know what this color is called but this would be the the, the zero, right? the first order term which appears in the numerator, and then the the purple line would just be the second order term. I add all these lines and I get a plot which actually looks like this. Okay, so well, can we get something more, some more information about what how does the closed loop system look like? So what I do on MATLAB is MATLAB actually shows me the the stability margins. So we'll quickly. Uh, see what is happening here and we will postpone the complexity of it to a little later. But what it shows me is that the closed loop system is it stable? Well, the answer is no. 
similarly here right if I look at how did I define the gain margin the gain margin was I look at the point at which you know the my phase becomes 180 and I look at how far it is from the point minus 1 plus j0 in the in in the Nyquist thing here it translates to decibels right so I am just looking at, at this line and I am also looking at this line for the phase margin where I say I, I hit the minus 1 point right or the unit where my magnitude becomes unity magnitude becoming unity in the log scale would be 0 dB line right I do all this and says well the closed loop is actually unstable okay what does it mean right so I have a uh, if I will just look at so let us let us try drawing the root locus for this uh, okay I will just directly go to MATLAB and I will just draw it uh, okay I hope as I remember the commands properly G I will call as a transfer function the poles. So, I will have 10 and 30 and in the denominator I will have fourth order so 1 as 4 as cube as square as power 1 and 0 ok. I just I just write the earlier transfer function in this way and this is what I get. So, if I just look at the root locus of this guy G ok. So, so ok. So, for so if I just put my cursor here it will tell me what is the gain right. So, gain is 0 and if I look at well how the system looks like that the system here has a gain of uh, 10 right. So, if I see if I go till here well I am already in the in the unstable region right for all gains greater than this guy of 0.14 in absolute terms I am stable. So, so all gains from 0 to 0.1 and if I am at the at the gain of the system which is 10 I will become unstable right. So, that is what that gain at 10 my poles are on the on the right half plane and my system becomes unstable and that is what this guy is uh, is trying to tell us here right where it says that the closed loop system is actually unstable ok. Not not to worry much about this we will we will keep on revisiting this several times until we understand this exactly what it means right. So, we will kind of postpone this where we will try to understand it at this gain my closed loop system is unstable. What is a closed loop system? The characteristic equation of 1 plus g times s equal to 0 ok right ok. So, now we will go to this example right which will look a little bit familiar if I say this is s plus 2 and s plus 1 and s minus 1 ok. So, this is we had plotted the Nyquist for this right which will actually uh, did something like this. This was 0, this was minus 2, I was encircling the point minus 1 plus j 0 once and then the system was stable right. So, the open loop system is as an you know this is, is open loop unstable, but I know that the closed loop is stable ok. So, how will the the Bode plot look for this guy? So, I will just write this down as 2 j omega by 2 plus 1 and again j omega plus 1 and j omega minus 1 and ok the crossover frequencies would be 1, 1 and 2 ok from this omega is with 1 over t ok. Now, few interesting things here. So, let us see well the, the plot of 2 would be just a straight line ok let me uh, ok just this the plot of 2 would be a straight line the plot of j omega over 2 plus 1 would be something like this they meet at uh, 2 and then they do this ok. Now, look at this guys right. So, 1 over j omega plus 1 1 over j omega minus 1. So, these guys will do something interesting. So, the magnitude plot for the first guy say I will take the stable guy first and it will just go till omega equal to 1 sorry this is not drawn to scale, but you know and it goes here right, at minus 20 decibel per decade ok. Now, the second guy again 
So, this is the plot for the unstable guy, this goes till here till omega equal to 1 and still be minus 20 decibel per decade. You see because the magnitude is the same for this guy, right? so what is the magnitude for the first guy that is 1 over square root of omega square plus 1, the same here also magnitude is uh, okay. the magnitude is 1 over square root omega square plus 1 also. Okay. So, just by looking at the magnitude plot, I may not be able to say if the system is stable or not, because this will correspond to, to s plus 1, this also correspond to s minus 1. Right? So, what will change is the phase. right? So, this will have different phases and I will show you the exact plots now how they look like. Right? So, this red guy is the uh, the uh, so this this red by would be you know the zero at minus two plus k, right? And then the green guy. So these plots actually overlap, and this will be both the the stable and the unstable pole, right? And then now look at the phase, right? So we see that you know if I, if I were if you just remember how the first order terms look like, so the the angle started from zero, it went to minus forty five at the crossover frequency, and then here, okay? Similarly with this guy. And then this is how the, the overall plot actually looks like. Okay, again, so so couple of questions which we can try to try to answer here. So can just by looking at the Bode plot, can I say if this, if, if it corresponds to a stable or an unstable pole? Well, just by looking at the magnitude plot, well at least I can say that this is a pole, right? Because the zero will go up. Now, uh, what was the how did the magnitude behave for a term like this? One, o, sorry, the phase one over j omega t plus one. I start with uh, at, at at omega equal to zero. I start from phi equal to zero. Then omega is one over t. I start uh, then I go at minus forty five. And as omega tends to infinity, my phi goes to minus ninety degrees. Right. So that's that's happening in the green line. Okay. But the blue line does something strange. Right, it starts at 180 and ends up at minus 90. Okay, so this this is one thing which you can distinguish just by looking at the magnitude plus the phase plots of if it corresponds to a stable pole or not. Okay, so how does the overall system now look like? Overall system, well, the transfer function looks something like this and this. Okay, so what was the gain gain margin? Well, the closed loop system is is stable. Right, you could just look at one plus uh, you know this thing being equal to 0, the closed loop system is stable, but it has a negative gain margin at minus 6. So, which essentially means if I draw the root locus, so I have a pole here, a pole here and a 0 here, this is plus 1, this is minus 1, and this is minus 2, okay, this is 0 here. So, for some values of, so at k equal to 0, I am unstable. Okay. Well, not I am not unstable, but the system is unstable. Okay, then I keep on moving until at k equal to 0.5, I reach this uh, this point. So my my system is stable after this thing. So the gain margin would be 20 log 0.5, right? And this will turn out to be uh, negative or six uh, decibels, right? So minus six dB is the thing. And if you remember last time I said these are systems which have negative gain margin, right? even even the Nyquist thing, right? So, look at the how the Nyquist look like. So, this was uh, this was minus 1, this was minus 2. Okay? And for a system, okay, I am just really messing up this, but that is okay. For a system, when, when we sorted the Nyquist arguments, we say if this was um, A, 1 over A was the gain margin. Right? So, if you increase the gain by a factor of 1 over a, the system was stable. Here what I am doing, I am decreasing it by a factor of 1 over a, right? this is you know 1 over 2 in the negative direction and therefore, I have this negative uh, gain margin minus 6.02, this I think the MATLAB will tell you directly. Of course, lots of things again will come on this while we are dealing with stability and also minimum and non-minimum phase systems. At the moment, you can just just understand this from what is happening through what we learned through the Nyquist that I really have to 
decrease my gain for for this for, from for k equal, decrease my gain because the open loop gain is one, and also from the root locus it is obvious, right? That I start from an unstable system and I have to make it to to a stable system, and the closed loop is, is stable here, unlike the previous case. Yeah, that's what even the Nyquist tells us. Okay. So. Okay, just before this, I'll just do try to do one more one more example, right? So, okay, I'll just uh, okay. Mm, let me say I am looking at so so far we have just been doing you know positive you know negative transfer functions, so ne negative gain margins. So let's say I take a system one s plus one, s plus two, and s plus three. Okay, I missed this note sheet. Okay, so g of s is one over s plus 1, s plus 2, s plus 3 and I could see well, this is also plotted check right. So, this is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and the root locus would look this guy will go here, these two guys will meet up here and they will go here right. So, this is k equal to 0 and this k equal to some k prime that is we will we'll find out. Now, okay, let us try, try to write this in the sinusoidal form. This is 1 over j omega plus 1, uh, this is j omega by 2 plus 1, this is j omega by 3 plus 1 and what will come here is 6. Okay? So, I have a thing of 1 over 6 and then I have crossover frequencies as 1, 2 and 3. Okay, so let's draw the the root locus and the Nyquist both for, for this and check. Okay, so I go here. I'll call G one as my transfer function. So on the numerator, I'll have one, and then the denominator polynomial would be one s cube plus six s square plus eleven s plus six. Okay, now okay, perfect. So Okay, I would want to draw the root locus. Okay, so I will have root locus of G one. And let's see how it looks like. Okay, so this is almost like what I drawn. So you see, at a gain of around sixty or you know, slightly around. Let's say roughly around the gain of 60, my system is on the verge of instability. Okay, so that is I would say some from 0 to 60, the system is stable. Otherwise, the system is unstable. Okay, let me say what the Bode says. Bode of the same guy G1. Okay. Okay, so this is how the Bode diagram looks like, and if I ask the system to show all its uh, stability margins on the grid, then this is something nice, right. So, we will have gain margin of, no, this is a positive 35.6 dB, which will actually be 20 log of 60, okay. And then similarly, it will have, uh, well, it may, uh, phase margin, uh, but it does not exist, right? it is stable for all phases. Okay, again, how do we compute this? Gain margin, again, we look at the phase crossover frequency at 180 degrees, right, at 180 degrees. So, I am somewhere here. So, this is the gain margin. The phase margin, well, I never actually touched the, the zero line. So, there is no, no, no question of uh, computing the phase margin here. But this is a system which is which starts with uh, a stable configuration when k equal to 0, it stays stable until k equal to 60 in absolute terms or 35.6 dB and later on it just goes on to the verge of uh, instability. Right? There are also systems with uh, let us say an infinite gain margin let us say a standard second order system, uh, say G 2 is T f, uh, let us say this D 1, this is a very simple second order system and this is what the first example we had done when we were even doing root locus 1, 2 and 1. I guess this looks good and let me first draw the root locus of G 2. Oh, you see the root locus is exactly what we had drawn, right. So, this is for all gains k it is uh, stable. Okay. 
Okay. Then you look at how the body of this looks like. Okay. Now I will go to the grid and I see how the stability margins look like. Right. So you will have a phase margin of 180 and then there is actually no, there is, this actually never reaches uh, well the 180 degree is reaches at infinity. So you will just have the gain margin to be infinite. You see, it never reaches 180 degrees, right? So these are systems which have infinite gain margin and, and phase margin of, of minus 180, which is kind of kind of very good for us, right? Okay, so okay, back to the slides. Okay, now to just just before we conclude, what we will try to do is is can I actually find out the error constants from the Bode plot. Okay, so let us say first we look at the position error constant. Kp, right. Okay, how was it a uh, typical transfer function like well if I write it in the sinusoidal form I have k, I have all the set of uh, zeros say I will call this T some, some number m over some poles at the origin and I will have T1 s plus 1 and some T n s plus 1 small n, right. Okay. So, and I can just write this in the sinusoidal tra transfer function just by substituting s with uh, j omega, right. So, let us say n equal to 0 and this is the only case where I am interested in the position error constant, right. Okay. So, when s equal to 0, uh, well how will my Bode plot look like? So, my Bode plot initially will have a certain constant magnitude, right, because this, this guy does not doesn't appear, right. So, this is just 1. So, it will just be k times this or things so whichever is, is uh, so all these guys at the lower frequencies are at the 0 dB line what else changes k right so this this will be something like this and then they'll go whatever if there is a pole here and then there's a zero and again a pole and so on right so this is the minus 20 db per decade line and this is the first corner frequency okay so what is this magnitude the magnitude here is so how how do we define uh, k the position error constant that was limit s going to zero g of s Okay. Now, same thing if I say what, what happens when limit omega going to 0 g of j omega s, well that is simply k, right. This guy goes away, I just put omega equal to 0, that is what I am left with. Now, this thing is again at, at omega equal to 0, right. So, 20 log of k p and this k is essentially k p, right. Right. So, when I write it in the time constant form. So, how do I find k p? Well, I just see where does this intersect this this. So, what is the, what is this constant and then this is actually, uh, actually 20 log k p. When I, once I know 20 log k p, I can find out what is k p. Okay. Then we look at the velocity error constant. Okay. And this is typically we will you are interested only in a type 1 system. Okay. So, which means the at for lower frequencies the plot would look something like this. I did not say the plot would look something like this and then well maybe after a corner frequency I just uh, go down and you know, do whatever. Okay. So, for lower frequencies g of j omega because the system is type 1 would we'll look would we'll look something like this okay these are again for very small omegas okay so 20 log of the magnitude of k over j omega so let's say that well, there is some point uh, I, so i just extend this line right till Till wherever I don't really worry about what happens at the corner frequencies, and say, um, what is this value at omega equal to one? Well, at omega equal to one, the value is 20 log t 
times kv. So, I take this uh, say omega equal to 1 here, I extend this line and this value would be 20 log kv. So, this is my magnitude in decibels and this is frequency. Okay. Now, well something else also happens right, so I am just going down and somewhere I am in intersecting the uh, somewhere here right, the 0 dB line. 0 dB line essentially means that the magnitude k over j omega at some say omega equal to omega 1 is 1, let me call this frequency as omega 1, right. So, I just I just keep going down and this 1 in the in in uh, in the decibels turns out to be the 0 dB right, I am just looking at 20 log 1 that will be the 0 dB line. So, I will ask myself what is the frequency at which the magnitude of k over j omega goes to 1, well that turns out to be k is omega 1, right. And what is this k? This k is essentially my kv, right, all these are kvs that I can say what is kv? Limit s tends to 0, s times g of s or similarly omega going to 0, j omega, g of j omega. So, if I take a type 1 system, this will be 1. So, what, what, whatever remains after everything is substituted to 0 is just k and this k is my kv, right. So, g of j omega for lower frequencies is just kv, kv and okay. So, the frequency omega 1 at which this line intersects the 0 dB line, this omega 1 is then my velocity error constant. So, I can do it two ways, see what is the magnitude at omega equal to 1 right and that, that will give some thing 20 log kv and given 20 log kv I can always find out what is kv or other ways I can just extend this line until I hit the 0 dB line. In absolute terms what does this mean? 0 dB means a magnitude of k over jv at 1 and this k essentially kv because of this this guy okay. So, this is k and this is a from, from definition of kv this is k okay. So, kv can be found out by the intersection of the initial line with the 0 dB line and the frequency at which this happens is my kv, okay. Then this should be straightforward to visualize. We look at the acceleration error constant. Right, and you say uh, so you will have n equal to 2 or a type 2 system, right, okay. So, here so, this initial thing will be uh, minus 20 decibel per decade line, okay. And here, well, what happens for low frequencies? I am now looking at g of j omega is k and this k a again turns out to be the acceleration error constant, right, by j omega square. How do you compute k a? Is limit s tends to 0 s square g of s right and then you do the j omega and whatever k is left is actually the k a. Okay. Again these are for lower frequencies, so if I just plot I will have a minus 40 decibel per decade line and then maybe something else happens, something else happens and so on. So, I just extend this line. Okay. So, I am interested in what 20 log k a by j omega square, what happens to this guy at omega equal to 1? This guy at omega equal to 1 is simply 20 log k a, okay. So, let us say this is uh, omega equal to 1, right. And the intersection is 20 log k a. Other way to also compute is to see at what point of time this touches this axis. So, I am looking at uh, magnitude of k a by j omega a square is 1 sorry or equivalently in decibels 20 log k a over j omega square is 0, 0 dB line, right? So, it is 0 dB. Magnitude of 1 in absolute terms corresponds to this guy. 
So, what will this tell me is that omega a, so let me just call this at omega a right at uh, omega equal to omega a. So, omega a is square root of the acceleration constant ok. So, I just keep going this till I reach the point omega equal to till I reach the 0 dB line and the frequency at which this happens is the square root of the acceleration error constant ok. So, again these are just this occur only for type 2 systems, K v occurs only for type 1 system and K p occurs only for type, type, type 0 systems and we know why, why this is true right. So, we saw, we saw several advantages now of, of the Bode plots right, much easier to compute than the Nyquist right, we just have to deal just by adding straight lines right and well a bit of we could visualize how the gain margin and phase margins look like even though we will really extensively discuss that a little later. What we also knew towards the end is that given a Bode plot I could actually compute what are the k p the position error constant, velocity error constant and the acceleration error constant right. So, that is what we, we learned uh, today. So, what we will postpone the experimental determination of transfer functions via a Bode plot when we finish learning what are the minimum phase systems. I will not really even uh, attempt to define that at the moment, but let us assume that there is something exists or ok. Or just to please you I would say well uh, minimum phase systems are the ones for which all the poles and zeros are to the left half plane. For example, this system was a non minimum phase system because there is a pole on the right. So, where everything is into this into the left is a minimum phase system. So, just, just remember it that way for the moment right ok. So, next class what we will do is to slowly understand the concepts of designing a controller right and what are the basic elements. These are well what they call as a proportional, a integral and a derivative control. So, we will see how to smartly use these individual elements, when to use this is a proportional controller enough or sometimes I need to add uh, integral control, what about a derivative control, can I actually realize a derivative control, but if I cannot realize a derivative control what are the other methods I will do, all this will slowly try to build up the theory behind it right ok, thank you.